You may remember, back in November, I met up with fellow YouTube photographer Julian Baird, and we discussed a possible collaboration. Well, earlier in the week, I received this message. Hey Chris, do you remember back in November when we met up in the Lake District, we talked about giving each other some photographic challenges. Well, I've got one for you. I want to see you create some super wide landscape images. I want you to get yourself a 16 to 35 or an 11 to 24 and shoot it as wide as you can. I want to see you create landscape images with big foregrounds. I think it'd be a really interesting challenge for you and I'd be really interested in seeing the results. What do you think? So obviously I accepted Julian's challenge and I've sent him this response. Hi Julian, thanks ever so much for your message earlier in the week. I accept your challenge and of course I have one for you in return. Fairly predictably, I'm going to go for the other end of the focal length scale and challenge you to capture a set of landscape photographs using a telephoto lens. I want you to get out there and capture a series of images using your 70 to 200 millimeter lens. Now as part of my challenge, I plan to capture three photos and I suggest that you do the same. And when we're done, let's swap images so that we can do a review and pick our favourite. So until then, take it easy, mate, and I look forward to seeing what you come up with. Unfortunately, I don't have a wide angle lens, and so I've decided to hire one for the weekend. The company that I've chosen to hire from are called LensPimp. Um, now, I don't really like the name very much, it has quite negative connotations. Um, but they have very, very competitive prices. They've got an extensive range of Canon lenses and their website made the whole process of hiring a lens very simple indeed. So it's Saturday morning, and my first shot of the three that I'm going for and I've come up to just shy of the summit of Hayland Fell and I'm photographing the view south towards Martindale and there's loads of snow on the ground and it's a clear sky and there's a bit of a pink glow going on and it's absolutely beautiful, conditions could not be better. Or at least I try to be Cause I hope that I'm not showing how I feel for her But she won't feel the same for me I've got this picture in my mind It's just the two of us Just the two of us But I know I'll have to try Try to let her go because Finally, the sun has peaked over the mountains to the southeast and I'm starting to get some light on the rocks that I'm using as foreground interest. We're now a full hour after sunrise, it's about 20 past nine. And this, this is where my day really starts. She's with somebody else and I will have to let her go. She will never know, na na, never know, na na. She will never know, na na, never know. Like she stole my heart. It's coming up for about 10 o'clock now. Um, I've been shooting for about an hour and a half. I've got plenty of images. Um, I'm going to pack up my gear now and head home because I've got another shoot planned for this evening and that's going to be something completely different. Now, at the moment, I don't really know which is my favourite image that I've taken this morning, but I shall put that up right now. I know it won't be easy. I want to hold her close. at those images when I got home on the computer and what I feared would happen has happened. So by trying to include an awful lot of foreground using the wide angle lens, what's happened is it's pushed the main subject of the image, i.e. the mountains in the background, away from the camera. And that's something that I've always tried to avoid doing and probably why I've avoided using wide angle lenses in the past. But now I'm up to location two, 
that shouldn't be too much of a problem because the prominent feature, the main focal point of this image, is going to be in the foreground. Who's to really blame? There's an aching in my heart. This evening I've come to Crosby Ravensworth Fell to photograph one of these. It's a grouse butt and it's where the guns stand uh, during grouse shooting. And what happens is the beaters will flush the grouse out of the heather that's all around us and the birds will fly over these butts to keep the guns relatively well hidden um, so that they can pick them off, I suppose. dream that I would figure out that there are things that kind of bring you to a screeching stop there's no way to save your heart I'm starting to lose the light now I got a couple of shots that could be okay um, I think I've made better use of the wide-angle lens this evening than I did this morning um, tomorrow morning I'm planning my third and final shoot and uh, fingers crossed for a bit more snow because that's the forecast at the moment. Okay, location number three. This is Beacon Hill on Auden Scar, which is just inside the Yorkshire Dales National Park. And if I look cold this morning, there's a really good reason for that. And that's because it's bloody Baltic up here. If it's foreground interest that you're after, you can do a lot worse than the limestone pavements that you can find throughout the Yorkshire Dales. Even this far west, there are still some patches that are in reasonably good condition. If you go even further west into the Lake District, there are some patches there as well. I'm thinking specifically of Nipe Scar Common. But the problem up there is that there's no real focal point. Whereas here on Beacon Hill, we've got this monument. And I'm going to use that as my main subject and then the limestone as foreground interest. My plan for this morning is to set up my camera here, about 100 meters away from me. And then I want to start working towards it, picking a few different compositions as I go. Patience, little patience, I don't want to be dreaming. Wait for me, just take a look around you. Can't you see, I'm happy that I found you. I think that went okay. I think I found a few nice compositions. Um, there were a few rock formations with, uh, that had fissures in and they were providing kind of leading lines up towards the focal point, which was the monument. Um, I even had time for a quick selfie as well, which was good. Um, but now I think it's time for me to make my way home because it's got really, really cold up here and I can't feel my fingers anymore. Through the fire, baby, please, my darling. So that was my wide angle challenge. Uh, how did I get on? 
Well, I enjoyed the challenge itself. Um, it was great to try new things uh, and to push myself as a photographer. Um, but I don't think I really enjoyed using um, a wide-angle lens. Um, as I said uh, earlier in the video, um, it had the effect of pushing the uh, focal point of the interest in the subject much further away from the camera and made too much of the foreground interest. And this is something that I've um, always been careful to avoid in the past. So I don't think I'm going to want to do too much more stuff with extreme wide-angle lenses. Um, I certainly won't be buying a wide-angle lens uh, in the future or in the, in the, in the um, near term. If I do buy a wide-angle lens, then it's also very unlikely to be that 17 to 40 mil Canon lens that I was using in that challenge. Um, I've subsequently spoken to a number of other photographers and they've recommended the 16 to 35 uh, mil lens from Canon um, and they say it's much sharper and I was concerned a little bit around the sharpness of that um, 17 to 40 mil lens. Um, but the one thing that I will do before I buy any more lenses is that I will hire one from a company like LensPimp um, because I felt that um, if, if uh, I hadn't have hired that, then I could have made quite an expensive mistake going out and buying that 17 to 40 mil lens. I've picked my favorite three images and I've emailed them over to Julian. So if you want to see which ones I've chosen and what Julian thinks of them, then you should head over to his channel and check out his long lens challenge video. I'm now going to have a look at the three images that Julian took as part of his long lens challenge. Now, before we get started, I just want to say that Julian is a mate, but he's also a photographer that I respect a great deal. Now, me reviewing his images is going to be a little bit like a painter and decorator reviewing the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. First up, we have this scene of Hay Tor on Dartmoor taken from Ripon Tor. Now, this is exactly what I was expecting from Julian. It's a classic long lens landscape, and it's a great example of his skill as a photographer. Now, this shot has everything. It's got a strong main subject. It's got those beautiful misty hills in the background. It's got a little bit of light on the foreground, and it's got that road that leads the eye from the bottom of the frame up to the main subject. Julian shot this image at 112 mil, and if it had been me, I'd have been tempted to push that all the way up to 200 millimeters, and to include just the tour and the misty hills in the background, and eliminate a lot of that empty foreground. Next up, we have a similar image of Hay Tor, but this time Julian has used his lens at its widest setting, and he's taken multiple exposures, which he stitched together to form a panorama. Now at this point, some of you might be tempted to call foul uh, and suggest that he's bent the rules slightly, but don't be too hasty. This perfectly demonstrates one of my favorite rules of photography, and that is simply that there are no rules, or certainly none that can't and occasionally shouldn't be broken. Of the three images, this is actually my least favorite. Um, for me, there's simply too much empty foreground, when most of the interest is in the middle and far distance. If it seems like I'm being a little harsh on Julian, well then I am. You see, I want to try and offer a little bit of balance, and I fear I'm about to get all excited. This is Julian's final image. It's of a marker post just off the beach at Sidmouth, and I have to say I absolutely love it. I love the central composition and the subtlety of the tones. I also love the way that Julian has used a long exposure to remove any distracting textures from the sky and from the water. I love this image so much that with Julian's permission, I've had this print of it made and I'm gonna hang it on the wall in my office. I can think of no bigger compliment that I can pay to another photographer. So that's it, the end of our lens challenge. I certainly enjoyed it and I hope that you did too. If you have any other ideas for challenges that you'd like to see Julian and I take on, then please leave a comment below. That's it for me for this week. I'll see you next time and until then, take it easy. Baby, please, my darling.